I had no choice, did I? I'm a woman. Of course I had to invent, not only myself, but ways of escape that no one else had ever thought of, not even I. Because I had to be fast enough on my feet to know how to improvise. And I succeeded. Because I always knew I was born to dominate your sex and avenge my own. When I came out into society, I'd already realised the role I was condemned to, namely to keep quiet and do as I was told, gave me the perfect opportunity to listen and pay attention. Not to what people told me, which was naturally of no interest, but to whatever it was they were trying to hide. I practised detachment. I learned how to smile pleasantly while, under the table, I dug a fork into the back of my hand. I became not merely impenetrable, but a virtuoso of deceit. Needless to say, at that time nobody told me anything, and it wasn't pleasure I was after. It was knowledge. <laughs> when, in pursuit of furthering that knowledge, I told my confessor I had done everything. His reaction was so appalled, I began to get a sense of just how extreme pleasure could be. But no sooner had I made that discovery than my mother announced my marriage. So I contained my curiosity and arrived in Monsieur de Matai's arms, a virgin. All in all, Matai gave me little cause for complaint. And no sooner had I begun to find him a little of a nuisance than he very tactfully died. I used my year of mourning to complete my studies. I consulted the strictest moralists to learn how to appear, philosophers to find out what to think, and novelists to see what I could get away with. Finally, I was well placed to perfect my techniques. Only flirt with those you intend to refuse. Then you'll gain a reputation for invincibility while safely slipping off with the lover of your choice. A poor choice is less dangerous than an obvious choice. Never write letters. Get them to write letters. Always make sure they think they're the only one. Win. Or die.